Meantime, the Anti-Defamation League is out with a report card for universities grading 85 schools on rates of anti-Semitism and campus responses to discrimination against Jewish students. MIT, Harvard, and Princeton are among those who failed. They got an F, while uh, Brandeis and Elon University receiving uh, uh, A's. Joining us right now with more on this, Jonathan Greenblatt, CEO and National Director of the ADL. So, uh, you know, most people who go to Harvard get straight A's to get into Harvard. Right. And now you're, you're giving them an F. They're not going to be used to that. Well, look, it is long overdue for these universities that, again, issue grades to get graded themselves and how they're handling Jewish students. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, after, there has been anti-Semitism on these campuses for years, but after 10-7, Andrew, it exploded. The, and so that, that was the right. point of the report card, was to create an objective baseline, an, like an analytic framework to evaluate how are they doing, and to encourage them to do better. Well, so that was what I was going to say. This is like, I mean, now that you have this grading system, mm -hmm. have you gotten a response from these universities? Oh, yes. And are they, is it like the U.S. News and World Reports, which, by the way, is, has, has perverted the, uh, the, the education system in its own way, but sure. people desperately want to be higher ranked on the right. system. So I assume people don't want to get an F, and they were hoping that next year they will get an A. Well, it's a good question. I mean, we thought about, as we were thinking about doing this, we thought about what's the best way to approach this issue? What's the best way to encourage a race to the top? And because I heard from parents all over the country, is it safe for my child to go to this school? Students would say, I'm your applicants. Is it okay if I go to a Harvard or an MIT? They want to know, will they be adequately protected? Right. Will they be supported? So we thought about a ranking like that, but that's the wrong idea. For us, we want everyone to get an A. It's not great inflation, so this will hopefully push okay, them to do better. Let me ask a serious question. I hope I mean, they're all not, serious. I know, but this is, this is a, I want to just put it on the table. Shoot. You got kids? I got three. How old? Uh, 2019 and 14. Okay. So and one of them's at an Ivy League school. Right. So here's where I was going to go with this. Let's say the 19-year-old one was 17. Yeah. Okay. And let's say they got into any one of the schools that you just gave an F to, yep. including Harvard, et cetera, yep. okay? which people would say, oh my God, I got my kid into Harvard, I, I, I won the, the parent lottery, I've done yep. everything right. Yep. Would you tell your child not to go to that school? So look, so again, my son is at one of the schools that did very, very badly. But the truth is, is you can't just take the entire dimensions of a university and distill it into one grade. But what this grading system does do, Andrew, is for me as a parent, it allows me to know, is the school doing enough? Are they taking action? Do they have the right policies? Right. What's the climate like? So again, there but, but, but when the parent call, oh, take yeah. your own kids out of it. When, the, when some parent is calling you saying, my kid's a senior, yeah. just got into XYZ schools. I know they got an F on all of your, your report cards. Um, are you saying to them, okay, Go to the school that has an A, or you, what are you saying to them? What I'm saying is go in eyes wide open. You need to know, and your student needs to prepare for what's going to happen. Let me give you an example. I spent the day yesterday at Harvard Law School. This is arguably the top law school, not just in the United States, in the world. And the stories that I heard from the Jewish students were abominable. I heard about a student government, you know, literally throwing the rules, you know, out the window in order to pass anti-Israel resolutions. I heard about Jewish students who have been isolated, alienated, and I heard about an administration that's not helping them, so not what, responding to emails, not responding to phone calls, what did, et cetera. What do the administrators say when, when you issue a grade like You know, this? look, we worked with Claudine Gay at Harvard, and we're talking to Alan Garber now. Some of these administrators, and I've got, you know, in emails in my inbox this morning from university presidents saying this, and from parents right. saying this is unfair. This doesn't adequately represent life at my school. But you know what? If you don't have the right policies, Becky, if you haven't taken the right actions, if you're not supporting your Jewish students, the grade speaks for itself. Let me ask you a different question. We were talking about DEI yeah. earlier in the six o'clock hour yeah. because one of the things that's very interesting that just happened was that Harvard yesterday yes. decided they were going to bring back standardized tests. I saw that. And these are all, in some ways, interconnected issues. Uh -huh. Is your sense that, and, and, and you have been outspoken, I think, about just how the DEI programs, at least as constructed, don't include anti-Semitism in the right ways? We know that they don't, yes. But does that mean, ultimately, that, and I, you, can, you can see it now, that the pendulum is swinging back, it right. feels like, on DEI. I think that's mm -hmm. one of the indications is this uh, is, the, yeah. is the requirement for the SAT. Yep. 
Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Or is it that the DEI programs need to be shifted and adjusted in different ways? So I'm someone who believes that diversity education is incredibly important. We are better colleagues or managers or classmates if we better understand the people around us and what they've been through and their backgrounds. But Andrew, to your point, if your idea of diversity, equity, and inclusion perpetuates the exclusion of Jews, that's wrong. So DEI, as it's currently constructed, needs to be rethought, reimagined, and repurposed. Right. Look, and you're I okay believe that's... You're okay with DEI short of that? Well, look, we live in the most multicultural, you know, pluralistic society in the world, Becky. But I, so I think, again, diversity education is important. But when we force our kids to play in the oppression Olympics, everyone loses. So some of the core tenets of what I'd call the DEI ideology definitely don't work, even though diversity and inclusion are incredibly important and right, need to still be prioritized. Out. That's how I see it. So standardized testing is not something I'm an expert in, right. but I want these schools to get diversity right rather than the way they're doing it now. Jonathan Greenblatt, it's great to see you this morning. Thank you, guys. Thank you